Hello everyone, as you know, my name is Daniel Fernandez. I am the owner of sciencehydroponics.com and today I will be doing a video. I'll continue uh, my series of videos on uh, plant uptake and how plant uptake affects media pH. So on the last video, we had talked about the creation of leaf tissue and we talked about how when tomatoes create leaves, they will uptake more anions than cations and how the fact that this happens means that the pH will tend to increase in the media. We talked about how this is necessary to create the health, to create healthy tissue and um, basically how this is a consequence of the imbalance between cation and ion uptake caused by the tissue composition. Now, today, we're going to talk a little bit first about how we can help the plant fix this uh, balancing problem. And also we're going to be talking about what happens when we build something that is not tomato leaf, but for example, tomato fruit. So when, if you remember when we talked about the different forms of the different nutrients, we talked about how nitrogen is present as nitrate, but we also mentioned that nitrogen is present as ammonium. Now, if you see the excess here is one equivalent per kilogram, this means that we could completely remove this difference if we could replace 5, 0.5 equivalents per kilogram with a cationic form of nitrogen. This means that if we add 0.5 equivalents per kilogram of ammonium, we can actually make this difference zero. This is because not only are we adding 0.5, but this 0.5 is also replacing 0.5 of nitrate. So we would replace 0.5 equivalents of nitrate with ammonium, and this would create, would, would completely overcome this difference because we would shift, um, we would basically eliminate 0.5 and then add 0.5 to the cation side, so that this in the end would be zero. Now, if you look at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is around 17% uh, of uh, total nitrogen. So the total nitrogen we have is 2.85, and 0 0.5 is basically 17% of the total nitrogen. So we need to replace 17 of the total nitrogen with ammonium. And if you look at research, you'll see that 15 to 20% of, of N is usually provided as ammonium. So this is a good, um, a good way to reach this conclusion that you will benefit whenever you're growing leaves from a 15 to 20% contribution of ammonium to your nutrient solution. Now, what happens when we are growing something that is not leaf? So here we have a table that shows you the composition of tomato fruits. And you can see that the composition is very different to that of, the, of a tomato. So these are in terms of grams per kilogram, which is how I found the original data. You can see a link to that in the description to where I found this data. Now let's look at the percent of dry, of dry weight, and so percent dry per kilogram as, as we have it here. And you can see that the tomato is very, very different compared to the leaf. The leaf is 4% nitrogen. The tomato barely has any nitrogen. Uh, according to at least this paper I found. Uh, the amount of phosphorus is also way, way lower. The potassium is the highest thing that we have in the, in the fruit by far. And we have a small amount of calcium and a small amount of magnesium and a small amount of sulfur. So by far the largest contributor to the tomato's dry weight is potassium. Little nitrogen, little phosphorus. This is not surprising because a tomato uh, in terms of dry weight is mostly carbon containing compounds. It has very, very a, a very small mineral content that is mostly potassium as you can see here. The fact that it's mostly potassium means that when we use the molar masses 
to calculate the moles per kilogram and then the equivalents per kilogram, we see that the potassium dominates here. Even though this is still lower than we have here, it is a pretty large contribution. When we calculate the sum of cations, it is now 0.85. So it is much lower than here because the contribution of other cations is very small. And this is again, sorry, in equivalents. And then when we calculate the sum of anions, it is very, very small. And this means that in total, in this case, our difference goes the other way. The difference between um, cations, uh, anions minus cations is now going the other direction. And this means that we now are actually the other way. So now, if you remember, if we call the sum of our cation equivalents A and the sum of our anion equivalents B, in this case, A is greater than B, and for this reason, the pH will tend to go down. So in this case, the pH will go down. And it will go down so much as to require the addition of 44 grams of potassium hydroxide per kilogram of dry weight. Of course, tomatoes are mostly water, so 44 so a kilogram of dry weight of tomato will be even like 100 times larger in terms of wet weight. So we, we are talking about maybe like 100 kilograms of tomato will require 44 grams of, of potassium hydroxide to lower the pH that's caused by the uptake of the potassium that is actually needed to grow those tomatoes. We can see here in this graph, again, how this difference how this potassium is way, way larger than anything else. Now, we do have some control here in terms of the amount of potassium that we feed the plant. If we lower this amount of potassium, we can indeed um, get this number to be smaller and we can indeed get this to be a, a, a less dramatic decrease in pH. But the issue when we do that is that we can compromise the quality of the, of the tomatoes. So we want to keep the potassium high normally in tomato cultivation, which leads to sharp decreases in the pH. If we try to increase nitrogen to try to create leaf tissue, then this means that we might make this, uh, we might grow less fruit. Uh, bear in mind that the, a plant is a plant like a tomato is always growing leaves to some extent. So although we are building mainly fruit, this number is not going to be as large because it will be somewhat compensated by leaf tissue that's still being grown that pushes pH in the other direction, the uptake of nutrients to build leaf tissue. So in the end, this number when we're building fruits and leaves, largely fruits, will tend to be a little bit smaller. To compensate, however, we can actually use another anion. <clears throat> if we add chloride to nutrient solutions, then we can actually compensate a little bit for these um, nitrogen because chloride can also be uptaken and the chloride can help us compensate on the anion side. Chloride um, has been shown to antagonize nitrogen to some extent, but recent uh, recent research has shown that some chloride can actually be synergistic with nitrogen uptake and some chloride can also be beneficial. There is also ample experience with the use of sodium chloride in tomato cultivation to increase the drought stress of the formulations and also in a way to help with this pH balancing issue. However, uh, most commonly, we will uh, tackle this issue by in our recirculating systems by adding bases when necessary or by reducing potassium if we need to so that we can balance leaf and fruit creation so that uh, the changes in pH are minimal. Now you can see here that the change in pH depends fundamentally on what the plant is exactly trying to build. If a plant is building fruits, then it might change pH in a completely different way compared to when it's building leaves. But if it's building both fruits and leaves, then it will be somewhere in between. Also, depending on the composition of the fruit, the change might be less or more extreme. In the paper that I show uh, where I 
show the mineral composition of tomatoes, you'll also notice that there are several other compositions for different tomato varieties and different uh, experiments that were done in that paper. So there are basically several potential different compositions that are achievable and not only a single composition might be healthy. However, consider the composition of the leaves that you're growing and consider the composition of the fruits or the product that you're building. Uh, fruits, flowers, any product that you might be building and that might give you an idea of where you expect the pH to go as the tissue is being built. Also, there are many, there are several alternatives that you can have in order to compensate for these cation absorption. One is chloride. We also have, you know, conjugate bases of organic acids, for example, acetates or things of that sort can also help balance this uptake of potassium and introduce uh, another anion into the plant that isn't nitrogen because introducing nitrate, as I, as I said, would basically stimulate leaf production because it is mainly used for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this part, the second part of our journey into how nutrient uptake affects pH. If you saw any mistakes, if you saw any problems with the video, or if you have any comments or suggestions about these or future videos, please remember to comment um, so that we can have a discussion about it. Also, please remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video and bye-bye.